We're on page 240 of the new bilingual edition. The old bilingual edition was actually edited by my Rashiva. I have one of those, but I think it's hard to find it. I don't know if they still make them. Or we're in Kuf Aleph in the Simonim of Rav Chaim Freelander. Last week we were discussing how Hashem creates things in the world. And we said Hashem has hashpaos, he has emanations, and different emanations create different things in the world. Okay, we're getting a little Kabbalistic, so stop me if something's not clear. I'll try to answer it, but chances are I won't understand it either. We'll try our best. What is an emanation? It's a good question. First question, what is an emanation? I can't answer you exactly. Let's say tube or something. Oh, you mean the English definition yeah, of emanation? Or like, or the, no, so an emanation... English definition. Oh, so the English definition of emanation is hashpa. Oh, it's a hashpa. How would you translate hashpa? Or what's meant emanation or hashpa? It's a certain... I would say it's not an exact translation. It's, I would say it's a certain spiritual energy that Hashem, will say, uses to create things in the world. How about that? Now, beyond that, I don't know what it means. Rabbi, Rabbi Stewart, how would you translate emanation or hashpa? Okay, so we're all uh, we're just trying our best here, Darren. We're all in the same. So you're, at least you're honest. But so yeah. All now, the same. basically, just based on a barrel's of all said, the last time, every time it comes up, is is that at the end of the day. Hashem set up the world to run in certain ways, right? Why did he do that? We don't know, but he set it up. He set it up that a car run without gas, a person don't run without food, right? But one of the things, somehow, there's some, right, there's some sort of, um, there's some sort of, sort of giving where Hashem gives uh, certain, um, what's the words? He gives... Emanations? Emanations that comes from him. But he's giving something the people, right, he's giving to the world, to creation, that that allows it to keep functioning, like an energy boost, etc. Something like that. But again, this, what I told you was I have no clue. I'm just saying, but this is like, after saying I have no clue, there's some sort of, the way he made the world run, he did, right? He made it run that you water the grass, it'll grow, otherwise there's no water, it won't grow, right? We don't know why, but that's how he did it, right? But then, with it, then, like, almost like, on top of that, he also has this sort of like energy thing that just keeps it gives to the world. No the spheres. <laughs> the say quoi. Exactly. I'll, t- I'll, t- I'll tell you just. Can we can we keep it simple? It's 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 a way for Hashem to will the world to function. Right. It's spiritual energy. T- right. When Rabbi Naaman came here. When he spoke, he translated uh, Derech Hashem. So this part of, uh, he also translated the Ramchal's Maim Rachachma. So this part of the Sefer of Maim Rachachma, he didn't translate. Cause it, so. Okay, but he's not ready. Right, he's not going to go too much into it. He's going to go a little into it. And what we mentioned last week is that these spiritual emanations, the spiritual energy, there are different ones to create different things. So Hashem wants there to be wisdom in the world. There's a certain spiritual energy that creates wisdom. He wants power in the world, so there's a certain spiritual energy that creates power. There's different types of spiritual energy for different things in the world. Okay? So leave it on the simple level. So Kuf Aleph. Amr HaNashama says the soul. Why does Hashem need these different types of spiritual energy to, to create different things? Couldn't he have just created everything with the same spiritual energy? So just like in one shot, boom, everything is created. Amr HaSeichel, Shafa Ratzlam, when we say Shafa, when we say divine emanation, what we mean to say, Mash, oh, so he's, he's asking you a question. What, what is this Shafa that we keep talking about, this divine emanation? Masha Magi Amina Bore, sorry, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Masha Magi Amina Bore, is Barak Al Nivra of Lasas Ba in Yinma. It means that which reaches the creation, that which reaches the creation, different creations to do a certain thing. We can't differentiate between these types of spiritual energy. What Hashem, when it comes to looking at Hashem, we have no idea how Hashem does things. Right? Even though the title of the Sefer is Knowing God's Plan, as he translates it in English, but we really have no idea how Hashem does things. 
We can only understand what Hashem does through the, that which is receiving the spiritual energy from Hashem, mitzad, the creation. So when we look at Hashem's viewpoint, how, how Hashem does things, looking at God, how God does things, we have no clue. We can't understand that. All we can do is infer what Hashem does based on His creations, which is us. We look at creation and we can see how Hashem made creation. But how Hashem does it Himself, from his point of view, that we have no comprehension. Now, when Hashem creates strength and power that it should come to his creation, so he made a hashpa, spiritual energy of, of gvura, of might. Because Hashem wanted in this spiritual energy, that there should be might in his creation. And when wisdom reaches his creation, the spiritual energy which reaches the creation is wisdom. So basically what we're saying is that the question was, why didn't Hashem just create everything with one spiritual emanation? Why are there multiple spiritual emanations? Sounds like the answer is we have no clue how Hashem operates when he's doing this. All we know is that we see that there's wisdom in the world, we see that there's power in the world, so Hashem created that through different emanations of wisdom and power. Okay. Can I say over something? Yeah. I don't know if this is... Who we, in the footnote? Yeah, I guess it's... I guess it's... Um, the... Rechaim Freelander. Rechaim Freelander. Um, he says, we don't know how Hashem works, right? But let's say we see something, we have something called Midas Haddin, God's attribute of judgment. We have something called God's attribute of mercy. So he actually spoke that us earlier, which we discussed at length probably a year ago. That's, that's how we perceive it. Hashem doesn't have different, uh, different mid, like, oh, today he's going to be strict, today he's going to be merciful. The way we perceive it is strictness and mercy, is how he says it. And he says the purpose is like, we could dive in to, and the Gemara says to change God's attribute of judgment to mercy. We're not changing God. The Hashem does it that way for our perception, that we, for us, us is the way to deal with Him. That's how He explains that right, right. on the bottom. Which is really what He says on top. He's explaining it. Okay. Shkech. All right, so now the next topic which he's going to, which is the, the reason he got into this whole thing with the hashpahs and spiritual energy is because we had an original question, which was, is good and evil in the world? So how does that come about? We have good and we have evil. So now he's going to relate the, the existence of good and evil to these hashpahs. And we're going to realize that the way that Hashem creates good is not the way, the same way that he creates evil. And this is very important because I, I've been told, I don't, I've never researched this, but told from other people that in certain religions they view the existence of evil as a, oh, this is true actually, um, in a, at least Zoroastrianism, they have that there's, a, there's a, a God of good and a God of evil. They can't understand that the same God who created good could also create evil. So we don't believe that. It could be even in modern religions I've heard that they, there is such a there is such a belief that there's a you know there's evil which is an independent force and constantly battling against God. So that we don't believe that. We believe right, God. The Christian concept of Satan has nothing to do with our concept of. Right. So I've, I've never researched it, but I've heard people say that over. That that but it, but in Judaism the Hashem created both good and evil. It's all from Hashem. But we're going to see that since Hashem is the source of all good, He didn't really directly create evil the same way that it directly created good. But it still all comes from Hashem. So that's a very important thing to remember, is that we believe in Judaism, Hashem is one. So that means everything in existence came about through Hashem. There is no separate force in the world, God forbid. No separate force. But we're going to see that the way Hashem created it is a little different. Now we're going to speak on our topic, on good and evil. And we see that there's good and evil in the world. So now, it's going the opposite. The, the intellect is asking the soul a question. How do you think God created good and evil? Amran Hashem says the soul. Isn't it obvious? What's good in the world that came from a divine emanation or spiritual energy of good? And that which is evil was a divine emanation of evil. So right, we're saying that wisdom has a specific spiritual energy to create wisdom. And power has a spiritual energy to create power. So he's saying the same thing. This is what the Neshama thinks. It must be. There's a divine emanation for good and a divine emanation for evil. That must be how it goes. I want to tell you two things. Hashem does not directly, it does never directly 
is mashpia, doesn't directly put spiritual energy of evil in the world. God forbid. Ki because he's a source of good. Since Hashem is a source of good, he doesn't directly put evil into the world. Amran Hashem, Vim Kain, obvious question then. How does evil come about? If Hashem doesn't directly put evil into the world, then we know that evil is not some other creation from some other god, God forbid. How does he create it? Not only that, he brings a Pasuk. There's a Pasuk in Isaiah. Hashem makes peace and creates evil. So it says Hashem creates evil. What's going on here? Amra Seichel says the intellect. First of all, it says he creates evil. Below Osera, it doesn't say that he makes evil. If you notice, the words change. It says, Ose Shalom, he makes peace. Uborira, he creates evil. So you see that there's two different words for creation used between good and evil. So what's going on? It doesn't say that he makes evil. Hashem does create evil in existence. Because if Hashem didn't create evil, it wouldn't exist. Hashem's the source of everything. However, he does not make it proactively. He does not actively make evil. So what does that mean? So how does he do it? So let's do one more paragraph, and we'll get into the, the, the kishkas of this will be next week, but let's just do a little introduction. So how does Hashem bring about evil? Amra Seichel Kraik Sive, this Psukim verses in Tehillim it says, Hashem Birtzon Chayamadata Lahariyos, Hashem with your will, you set uh, my greatness with strength. He started Fanecha Haisi Nifal, you hid your face and I was confused or confounded. Tastir Panecha Yibahal Yibah Heilun, you hid your face and I was confused. And Moses said in Dvarim, Vistarti Fanamehem Vahalechal, you will hide your face from them and they will be consumed. Vizet, he had tov. When it comes to good, Hakadosh Baruch Hu Ose Oso Mamish Veshifu Atov. Hashem, how does Hashem make good? That's an active putting in the world of spiritual energy of good. Avul Hara Eina Ela Heder Shifu Ubitulo. But evil comes about through holding back, through Hashem holding back his divine emanation of good. He's going to explain. Whether it's a little or a lot. When Hashem is mashpia good into the world, that comes about that all the goodness that the one receiving those, the creations need, comes about that he's good. Everything's great. He's getting all this hashpah of good from Hashem. Now if Hashem would withhold his divine emanation from his creation, then the creation would cease to exist. Bitogamar, just totally, totally gone. But if the divine emanation would not totally cease, let's just say Hashem withheld some of his divine emanation to a creation, and not totally cease it, Derek Marshall, how so? He's going to give an example. When it comes to the Shefa of life, Hashem is constantly giving this spiritual energy to a creation so that he should live. If he, if he has all of this shefa, all of this divine emanation, he's alive and healthy. Now, if he would cease, if God would cease to give this divine spiritual energy to his creation totally, what would happen? The creation would die, cease to exist. Let's say Hashem does not uh, cease totally this spiritual energy, what would happen? This creation would not die, but he would be sick and lived, and he would live a life of difficulty. This is obvious. So we can't say now. So the question was, if Hashem is totally good, how does he? How does? And every, but Hashem is still the source of everything. So how does evil come into existence? So he says, we can't say now that just like Hashem is mashpia good, that he's mashpia evil. But rather, the existence of good comes from when Hashem puts spiritual energy in the world. Evil and chisaron and all that comes about when Hashem withholds his hashpa of good into the world. So that's how we don't have, it's not like Hashem directly puts spiritual energy of good and spiritual energy of evil, but rather there's a spiritual energy of goodness, let's say life. And Hashem puts in the spiritual energy of life, and when He withholds it totally, a person dies. When He withholds it a little bit, a person will be sick and live a life of suffering. But it's not that He's directly creating two Hashbos, and that's why it says, O se Shalom, Hashem makes peace, Ubori Ra, and creates evil. Now, next week we'll get into it, He's going to get actually a little more detailed even about how... 
about how evil exists, even though it's only Hashem withholding emanations of good. And it gets, a, and then it gets a little more, uh, I guess, less. We'll say less esoteric after that. But yeah, you have to explain also if Hashem is withholding good, that means that something else is kicking in. He's going to talk about that next 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 week. So, how, how? So you have to. Uh, yeah. Because yeah. it can't be anything but Hashem. So he's going to talk about how there's two levels. There's a general level, and then like, it's, it, so, it sounds like, I, I don't totally understand it, but it's, it sounds like the, there, there's a general level and there's a specific level, so Hashem creates the, the potential for evil on the general level, and then with the lack of direct Hashba, it allows the evil to come into exist, to like the Magalgo into existence, to evolve. To evolve. But he does create, he cre- it sounds like he creates the source of evil, but he doesn't um, directly create the Hashba of evil, that evil can... Come, come into exist, which is based on a lack.